Hi, this is Dean Wedekind with Max 11. You may have wondered in the past, what's the right elevator belt to use in my bucket elevator? Should I use PVC or should I use rubber? There's some characteristics that would make a big difference. First of all, what is your climate? If you're going to be in a northern climate where the temperature will get below zero, you probably don't want to use PVC. And the reason is because a PVC belt does not like to uh, get flexible in cold weather. It's probably going to hold its shape if the temperature gets down cold. And when you start up your head pulley, it's going to want to stay in this shape. It's not going to want to move. And so you may burn through the belt. Whereas a rubber belt can be used in temperatures down to 40 degrees below zero. Now, you wouldn't necessarily want to use it all the time in the temperature that, that uh, cold, but it could. And when the belt starts, the pulley starts to spin, the belt will be able to move just fine. So temperature is an important characteristic. One other thing to keep in mind is the size of your head pulley. Now on our sample bucket elevator over here, we've got a very small pulley, but if you were to try to take that and put a PVC belt around it, it'd still be too small for this belt, but a PVC belt that's smaller and thinner would be able to go around this pulley just fine. A rubber belt, even a two ply belt, is gonna have a hard time going around that pulley. You could make it do that. You could actually force it to do it, but it's gonna put a lot of strain on the cover on the inside and stretch on the outside. It'll put a lot of strain and stress on the fabric in the middle, and it's gonna deteriorate much more quickly. So it's something you have to keep in mind. Most of the time, the diameter of your pulley is not a problem for either of these two types of belt, but if you have a smaller pulley, you're gonna to have to go with a PVC belt because it can go around a smaller pulley without damaging the cords on the inside. So let's take a closer look at the difference between the internal workings of a PVC and a rubber belt. A PVC belt, you'll notice, has one ply of material inside and the polyvinyl chloride, the PVC material, is on the outside as well as impregnated into the inside of the fabric. Whereas a rubber belt, you've got multiple plies. This one happens to be a three ply belt. So you've got three plies of material and fabric on the inside rubber in between each ply and rubber on both sides, top and bottom covers. And so that's an important distinguishing characteristic. A PVC belt is always gonna be a one ply belt, whereas rubber belts can be multiple plies. The other thing would be, if you wanna use fanged or saber tooth elevator bolts, where you have the two teeth on the elevator bolt, it's gonna go into a rubber belt much more easily because the covers are softer. The fangs are not gonna to wanna to go into that PVC belt because the PVC is a hard surface and you may have a hard time getting it to seat properly and then your buckets aren't gonna mount properly either. Probably the most important characteristic of any elevator leg belt that's gonna go into a grain or feed application though is that it has to be static conductive, oil resistant and flame retardant. Now a PVC belt from Maxi Lift is gonna have those characteristics but it's got a natural moderate oil resistance which will be good for most grain applications. A rubber belt, though, can have extra oil resistance, could be a superior oil resistant material. And so if you've got a feed mill that's adding fat or oil to the feed, you're probably going to want to go with a superior oil resistant rubber belt. Those are some things to keep in mind when you're considering an elevator belt for your bucket elevator. If you have more questions, contact us. Go to maxilift.com, find our phone number or our email address and get in touch with us. This is Dean Wedekind with MaxiLift.